Hello guys, welcome to today's video. If you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. My name is Ashley, I am so glad you're here. If you are not new to my channel, thank you so much for coming back. In today's video, we are going to discuss what I believe are the bare bones, minimal, must have baby items for the first six to 12 months of your baby's life. I'm going to give you guys four specific products that I think are truly for me, must-haves and then we're going to talk a little bit about a few other things and ways to look at baby products and items that you bring into your home for your baby um, and how you can be more minimalistic in those things so if that sounds interesting to you then just keep on watching okay guys so i have four specific products that i'm going to show you today just so you know i am naming brands here for a couple of them this video is not sponsored these are just things that i love and believe in and think would bring value usefulness um, to anyone in the first year-ish of their baby's life. So we're gonna talk about those four things in just a minute. But first, I want to address a few other things that you guys might be going, why aren't these things on your list? Aren't these must-haves? Yes and no. So, so much of what we think we must have for a baby is completely contextual. It all depends on our family dynamic, our personal needs where we live, the climate we live in. Do you drive a car or do you take a bus everywhere? You know, so much is contextual um, for what we might want or need for a baby. And some of it is just that we might want things and if we can afford them and they're in our budget, then cool, have them. But they're not necessarily uh, needs or must-haves, necessities, if you will. Uh, for instance, diapers. I can't recommend to you like a must-have thing, obviously, Unless you're gonna practice elimination communication, which is a valid option, you need something for your baby's bum. But I can't tell you if you should cloth diaper. And if you are gonna cloth diaper, which ones are the best ones for you? That's dependent on your own individual context. Or disposable diapering. I have done both. Um, and currently, I'm a disposable diaper user. So that's dependent on your context. Um, car seats, I can't tell you which brand car seat is the very best one. The best car seat for your baby is the one that you will use properly, that fits in your car, and you will use every single time. Um, I cannot stress enough how important car seat safety is for your precious little one. Please make sure that you are using your car seats correctly and that they are correctly installed in your vehicle. You can look for a certified car seat technician in your area to help you make sure that you are using it properly. As far as beds go, I can't tell you this is the best crib, you need this bassinet, any of that, because context, I bed share. There are no cribs or bassinets in our house. Um, but you may not want to do that. You may not be able to do that. So you will need to seek out some other form of safe sleeping space for your baby. There are some places where babies sleep in drawers and small cardboard boxes. Unless you think that that's like a terrible thing, like it's normal in these places and it's okay. So um, there's options. There's options out there for safe sleeping for your baby. There's a hair in my mouth. Okay, let's get that. No. Nope. Mm. Okay, I think I got it. Uh, feeding. I can't tell you what bottles to get because your baby might hate the bottles that my baby loved. Like I said, I'm, I, I could keep going through this list, but so much of this is all based on context. You know, do you need big heavy blankets? I don't know. Do you live somewhere where it gets really cold? Or are light cotton blankets all your baby needs? Um, that's context, context, context. Anyway, um, I have a video on my channel. I will link it down in the description box called Baby on a Budget. Um, how to do all the, the funner baby stuff <laughs> that you might want to do the extra baby gear and toys that aren't real needs but um, might be nice to have. How you can do those things more affordably and more inexpensively. So I will link that down in the description box if you want to go watch that. And now we're going to talk about the four things that, um, to me, these are things that I would not want to bring home a baby without having ready to go. All right, number one, if you've been around my channel and seen any of my other baby must have videos in the past, you will recognize this product right here. These are flower sack kitchen towels. They are about 28 by 28 inches. They are 100% cotton. They wash up beautifully. They don't hold on to smells because they're so thin. And PS, if you have issues with your towels, baby blankets, spit up rags, um, either not absorbing well 
or like holding on to stink, you might want to take a look at your wash routine. If you use dryer sheets, I am begging you, please stop. <laughs> Those are so, so bad for your health and for your textiles. So anyway, these flower sack towels. I'm gonna go ahead and open these up because I actually bought these because we need some new kitchen towels and these are so multi-purpose. I use them as burp cloths. I use them as light swaddling blankets for my babies. I use them as nursing covers. You can use them to lay baby on the floor. This can be a changing mat. They are incredibly affordable, usually around a dollar a piece, although I'm certain you can find even better deals than that. Um, these are from Walmart. I'll link some from Amazon if you guys would like me to. You can never have too many of these because when your baby is done with them, wash them up, throw them in your kitchen, and now you've got some new kitchen towels or garage towels or whatever. Um, they're just so multi-purpose, multifunctional, useful long beyond the baby years. If you are a cloth diaper user, these make great inserts, super affordable, really easy to wash because like I said, so thin, so they won't hold on to any of those smells that babies like to create in their diapers. You cannot go wrong with these. You need them, give them as baby gifts. They're the best. I would not want to bring a baby home without my flower sack towels. There's little fuzzies everywhere from me flinging that towel around because they haven't been washed yet. So they're still a little linty. Uh, you guys probably can't see them, but it's like snowing fuzz in front of my face right now. Okay, product number two. I discovered this, when did I get this? I think when I was, I was pregnant with Ruby and I found this at like TJ Maxx on sale. Um, you can still get it on Amazon, I'll link it. Um, I'm not sure what other stores carry it. This is the Shea Moisture Raw Shea Chamomile and Argan Oil Baby All-Purpose Diaper Ointment with frankincense and myrrh. It's a mouthful. This is a very thick balm. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I'll see if I can get it to focus on this. Ugh, quit trying to focus on my face. It's a very thick balm and sometimes it can separate a little bit because of the different oils in it. You can just warm it up under hot water to kind of get everything to meld back together. I have used this on a yeast rash on Ruby. I have used it on teething rashes. You can use it on dry patches of skin. It is amazing. I even use, I use it on myself. I use it on the other kids. I absolutely love this all purpose ointment. Um, yeah, it's, it's so, so good. And I have this big bottle that I keep at home. I have a smaller one that I keep in my diaper bag. Anyway, um, love this baby balm. So many, so many uses for it. Everybody who has a baby is going to experience some kind of rash or scrape or dry skin or bumps and bruises, something. You will have some sort of need for a good all-purpose ointment or balm, and I love this one. It, it literally cleared up Ruby's yeast rash in about two days, so this is a must-have for me. And like I said, these products are all what I would consider like minimalist must-haves. Like if you are just going to have a very small amount of products for your baby, you want them to serve as many purposes as possible, um, and you want them to be truly useful. So the next thing on my list, I'm not gonna show you because I'm not dragging my high chair in here, it is the Ikea antelope, is that what it's called? I'll see if I can insert a picture here. It's their $20, $25 high chair. I thought about whether or not this was a truly must have useful thing because honestly, like you can feed a baby, like sitting, they can sit on your lap. Um, however, I decided that it really was a must have for me because mama likes to have two hands free to eat a hot meal. And I think that that is important enough that I would, put this on my must-haves list. It is very affordable, it is nice and sturdy. It was brought to my attention that it is missing a key compon component for um, proper posture for your baby during eating, and that is a footrest. If you Google Ikea antelope footrest hack, you will come up with so many options. Everything from just a simple dish towel tied around the legs to give your baby something to prop their feet on, to buying a second tray and cutting holes in it and putting that up underneath so there's a platform underneath for baby to rest their feet on. It's an easy, very inexpensive fix. You could use one of your flower sack towels and attach it and then they have a little place to rest their feet. Dollar and done. 
Um, maybe you need to get some zip ties from the Dollar Tree, so two dollars is done. Anyway, um, it's a great simple high chair. It's easy to wash. You can hose it off. You can throw it in the shower. You can wipe it down, and it does the job. Highly recommend, definitely on my must have list. All right, the last thing on my list, um, this is still in the box because I just recently purchased this one as a gift for a friend of mine who is having her baby, well, today when you watch this video. She's being induced today. Um, I don't think she'll see this video because, you know, she's having a baby. So anyway, <laughs> um, the Ergo Baby Embrace Newborn Carrier. This goes from five to, 25 pounds seven to 25 pounds. I have used a lot of carriers. I've used stretchy wraps I've used ring slings. I have used other buckle carriers with inserts or folded up towels I bought my one of these which is out in the van right now. It's so comfortable. It's so easy to wear I'm gonna see if I can hold this up so you guys can see um, the straps spread out over the shoulder show you on the side here so it's adjustable from newborn up to 25 pounds i love that the straps cross in the back that just provides so much support so much extra support for your back when you're wearing your baby out of all of the baby carriers that i have used in 12 plus years of baby wearing this is for sure my favorite and as far as baby carriers go, it's not cheap, but it's still affordable. It's about $80. Um, this one was actually on sale on Amazon. So keep your eye out there. Sometimes they will offer coupons and discounts. I love it. I absolutely love this carrier. It has become my go-to baby gift. This is the second one, in fact, that I have purchased to gift to a friend. Um, all mamas are going to come upon a time where their baby needs them but they need their hands. And I think baby wearing is one of the very best ways to be able to meet your baby's need for touch and for the sound of your heart and for your and for that closeness while still being able to meet your own needs. Um, to give you free hands to eat something or drink some water or you know, hold and read a book. You know, it gives you the ability to do things to take care of yourself as well. So I think that um, a baby carrier is an absolute must have. And this one is, as long as you have an average-ish size baby could easily last you through the first year. I'll be able to wear Ruby in this through the first year. And she's not exactly a small baby. Um, like I said, she's 20, 21 pounds. She's 11 months old. If you have a baby on the bigger end um, of, the, of the growth chart, you may only get six to nine months of use out of this carrier, and I still believe that it would be worth every penny at that price. I know my sister got one for her son, Benjamin, to wear him in, um, and she really, really loves it for him as a newborn. Anyway, I am waxing poetic about this baby carrier because I, I just, you guys, I really love it. I really, really do. It's a knit fabric, so it's stretchy and it's soft. I wonder, like I wanna keep it, you know, nicely folded in here um, so that it looks nice when I gift it to my friend. But this is the blue and it's such a beautiful color. I have the burgundy. It's so, so soft. It's so supportive. I love the stretchy. I'm sorry, I'll stop talking about the carrier now. I think you guys get the picture. Um, like I said, this would be on my absolute minimal must haves list. So, you know, if you're, pregnant, getting ready to have a baby, and you wonder what do I really need coming home from the hospital? Some clothes for your baby. If you want to go the minimal route, my recommendation would be short and long sleeve, solid colored or simple patterns, stripes, polka dots, things like that, with matching soft baby lounge pants. You don't even necessarily have to purchase um, sleepers and outfits and all those things. Onesies and pants will pretty much do everything that you need to do. It will keep your baby covered, keep their little bodies warm, and you can keep a pretty minimal wardrobe if you just buy coordinating sets, um, you know, a few sets of onesies and a few sets of pants in each size and needs met there. If you live in a colder climate, you might need some outer pieces and things like that. But for most of us, when we have our babies in our homes, we keep our homes at a comfortable temperature for us to be in. So a long sleeve onesie and some soft stretchy baby pants is 
typically sufficient. So that's one way to kind of simplify your baby's wardrobe. I, for one, I know I love all the beautiful baby clothes, but if you really are trying to either be very minimalistic about your baby's wardrobe um, or keep it affordable and simple, that's a great way to do it. Just onesies and pants. I did want to show you guys, I set aside Ruby's little shoes because I wanted to show you these because I despise socks on babies. They don't ever stay on. They always kick them off. And I'm also not a big fan of shoes, like shoe, real shoes on babies either, because they need to be able to flex and move their feet. It's really important um, for them learning to balance and, and all of that. Uh, okay, so I don't know where Ruby's shoes are right now. I say, I'm using the word shoes. They're like, um, they're the Zitano fleece uh, snap-on slippers. So they kind of are like a sock and shoe combined and you can also get them in like jersey knit material. Uh, I'll see if I'm putting a picture here. I'll link them down in the description box for you. They stay on really well. They're cozy, they're cute. Um, and that's a good kind of minimal thing. A couple pairs of those to kind of rotate through if you need to throw one in the wash. I have to wash Ruby's a lot because she's, you know, walking now and so she gets them dirty. But Shoes like this are great for early walkers because they really need to learn how the ground feels beneath their feet. I would definitely recommend avoiding hard sole shoes for your baby for as long as you can. Um, it's good for them to get the feel and let their feet get strong using all the, their muscles and everything when they're learning to walk. This is turning into more than just a minimal baby stuff video. Okay guys, I think that is it for this video. If you are expecting, congratulations. I hope that um, these product suggestions were helpful to you. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already and you would like to be, just hit that red subscribe button down below. If you wanna be sure that you'll actually know when my videos go up, hit that notification bell. YouTube is kind of notorious for not putting videos in subscription feeds. And so the notification bell is a way for you to ensure that uh, YouTube will actually show you my videos. So, all right guys, thanks again. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. I will see you in my next video. Bye.